Hello there, gang. Uh, so my last video, I went for a bit of a walk at about uh, 2.45 in the morning for a couple of hours using this pack here, which is my get home pack. So this is the actual pack that I utilize. I throw it in my car. I take this with me to my work, which is usually about an hour away by a vehicle. And maybe, what is it, 85, 87 kilometers away. So my theory is that if something were to go wrong, terribly, terribly wrong, and I had to actually walk home, then this is the pack that I would use. So I'm looking at a time span of about two and a half, three days, walking in an unknown environment. I mean, it's known to me, but I don't know what's happening at that point in time. Now, when it comes to grab bags and things like that, I've said this a million times before, but I'll say it again as a caveat. You need to build your own grab bag. This grab bag isn't probably going to work for you in that you need to figure out what it is that you require, what your mission is or what your goal is, and then what kind of circumstances you're going to be working with. So it's not for everyone to have a bag that is packed, ready to get thrown onto your back and walk two or three days. That may not be the situation that you're worried about or that you're going to be dealing with. But this is my pack. And so a few people said, what's in the pack? Pull it apart for us. So now I'm gonna take you through my latest get home bag. Okay, for starters, this bag here, this is the Vertex Gamut 2.0. I've just got this pack. I've been looking at it for a while, thinking about getting it. I looked at a couple of reviews online about it and decided to go out and splash the money and get this. This is a pretty expensive pack. Uh, I got it in black. I like all my stuff to be in pretty neutral or black colors so it doesn't stand out when it's on my back. It could be, you know, anything. It could be a could be a uh, school backpack, it could be a work backpack, you don't really know what's going on in there. Doesn't look militaristic though, that's a big thing for me. This pack, I gotta say, it is fantastic. I was absolutely blown away by it, and every time I use it, I enjoy it more and more. So a few things about this pack, it's got lots of easily accessible pockets on it so I can put things in different places. Uh, not everything in the one big main compartment. The main compartment itself is very easy to get to, and there are little side compartments as well that I can put laptops and things like that in. So, what have I got on the outside of the pack here? I usually carry some water that I can access pretty easily. This here is the Pathfinder Titanium one liter bottle. Uh, I really like Pathfinder gear. It's excellent, excellent stuff. Uh, designed made by Dave Canterbury. I highly recommend you check out his stuff. I'll put links to everything in the show notes, by the way, so you don't have to uh, listen to what I'm saying. You can just chase it up afterwards. Navigation and communication on the outside here. So this here is a Garmin InReach Explorer. This version here I can actually use as a GPS unit. It's a satellite communicator, so I can connect my phone to it and communicate through satellite. It's a personal locator beacon and an SOS beacon as well. So handy piece of equipment, is pretty expensive though. This version, maybe $650. You can get smaller versions without the GPS functionality for about $450, but you do have to pay a subscription fee for that. So that's something to consider there. Um, but for something, for somebody who goes out into the wilderness, hunts, uh, you know, does wilderness guiding, hikes and things like that, it's probably worthwhile thinking about something like this that you can invest in. Not too bad of an investment really. All right, on the outside here, this entire front panel here, I can actually grab this and just pull it down to access all this part here. And this part's actually Molly and Velcro in there, so I can make it more militaristic. I can actually Velcro things like first aid kits on the outside there, and it works very well like that. But on the outside, what I have in this little area here, good pair of gloves. These are patrol incident gloves or pig gloves. Patrol incident gear, I should say, gloves. Um, very, very good gloves, extremely tactile. Not the most hard wearing gloves. They, they're not gonna destroy after one use, but they're certainly not gonna last as long as a good pair of leather gloves, but give you a little bit of warmth in your hands and very, very good dexterity with these. In fact, you can still operate your uh, mobile phone touchscreen devices easily with that. Now this here is actually a Super SE handkerchief. So they make a whole heap of like tactical handkerchiefs. This particular one, I've got a couple of them, but this particular one I love because bright orange, I can have that 
clipped onto the back of my pack and if I'm walking along a road, it's a big marker panel so people can see me and hopefully not run me over. This one actually has N95 filters sewn into it. So I can use that to filter water. So just make a little cone like that, put that in the top of the bottle and I could filter water through that. It's not gonna be 100% filter, but it's gonna take a lot of the big particles out. And then I could actually use this in a pinch over my mouth. So if I was in a fire, forest fire, uh, a riot or something like that, it's not gonna be the perfect answer, but it's gonna be better than nothing, that's for sure. So N95 filter in that, pretty handy little thing. This here is just a, a tiny little first aid kit I've got just for really common things. So in there, I've got antibacterial wipes. And then in this little mint tin here, I just keep a little kit, which is jam packed in there, which has a whole heap of plasters, uh, drugs, as in over the counter medications, tweezers, and tiny little suture uh, plasters as well to fix up little breakages and holes. Um, I've also got some alcohol wipes in there too but I could again use the antibacterial wipes for that purpose as well. So that's kind of like my mini version of my coughs, colds, sore holes first aid kit. Also what I love about the outside pockets here is these have these side pockets here, which aren't fantastic for accessing. You won't be able to fit a lot in there if the pack is full, but you've got a little zipper pocket on the inside and then just another pouch and that's on both sides. So this one here, I've got a length of paracord and a carabiner and then a silcock key. So I work in and around a city. Uh, silcock keys are designed to open up the spigots or the taps on the side of buildings. So I've got one of them. It's got every, just about every adapter you could want and a little screwdriver set on it. Very handy for if you're working in and around the city and you need to get water, potable water quickly. All right, in the top of the pack. So one thing I'll, I'll explain about this pack too uh, is that it has these little press studs on the side here. So I can access the entire main compartment or I can just access the top here. So if these press studs are done up, then I can just open the zipper to there and actually access what's in the top of the pack. So right in the top of the pack, I've got a lighter, which is in an ExoTac. It's just a big lighter in an ExoTac waterproof container and sort of smash proof container. So it won't get depressed. It won't leak the gas all through my pack and that'll be ready, good to go if I need fire. Uh, I've got my bigger head torch in here. I don't always carry this one in here. I have smaller versions, but this is the largest, chunkiest, heaviest and most powerful head torch that I own. This one is a LED lenser, LED lenser. Uh, and this particular one is called the H19R Core. Great head torch. You've got a floodlight, you've got a spotlight, and you've got a red light on there. So you can use it to not destroy night vision. And if you check out my previous video, you'll be able to see me using this uh, and trying to walk with the spotlight through fog, switching that to the floodlight, getting a much better uh, ability to see through the fog, and then at times using the red light so I don't destroy my night vision. Uh, easily rechargeable too, quite a heavy duty uh, pack on there. Now I walked with this in the dark on for four hours and it didn't even go through, not even a quarter of the battery. So you could get a fair amount of juice out of that there. Snacks, so a little bit of food here, easy access food and food that I can just have in my pocket. So I can pull that out of the top, stick it in my pocket. And that's just jerky. It doesn't really matter what brand you get of jerky. Jerky's great, I love it. Try to stick, steer clear of the uh, preservatives and stuff like that. Last thing that's in the top of my pack here is actually a first aid kit, but this is a trauma first aid kit. So that's actually Velcroed in there. Um, this is a what we would call an individual first aid kit or an IFAC in the military. We used to carry them around quite a bit uh, when we're in places where things go bang. But on the outside, trauma shears, tourniquet, most important thing, stop bleeding, expose the body. And then you've got a big zipper here that I can open this up. And that's filled with things like Israeli bandages, quick clot uh, gauze, gloves, um, tape and things like that, just for your more serious emergencies that can happen out there. 
like I said, this uh, actual package here is a, uh, the um, pouch, I should say, is a 511 pouch. I really love this version of their IFAC pouch. They've got a number of them. I'm gonna get a, a bigger one of these as well to fit more in. But this one, it comes with a little flap that you can Velcro on. So you can Velcro it onto your body armor or your chest rig. But this pack, another great thing about the Vertex pack is it has Velcro type material or it's at least soft material that things can Velcro onto. So if I was in an emergency and I thought this might need to be utilized a bit more, I could just tear that easily out of there. And then again on the front here, just Velcro that onto the front. That's not going anywhere. So again, really well thought through pack. So that's the first aid kit there. So I undo these press studs here and I can actually access the entire pack now. So the main compartment of the pack is all able to be accessed. In here, I have food. So I've got a couple of like emergency bars. I've got uh, dehydrated food for enough for about three days. And the most important thing, I have coffee. So really good coffee. That's if like, if you're not getting coffee into you, well, at least if I'm not getting coffee into me, bad shit's gonna happen. So that's extremely important. Coffee, food in there. Main compartment here, uh, water. So when we're talking about how I kit out my kits, I'm usually thinking about the survival hierarchy. And I'm thinking things like, okay, well, I can go three minutes without air going in and out of my body and blood pumping around the body. So traumatic first aid kits, all sorts of first aid kits, that's the most important thing. Then I can go three hours without some form of shelter. So I'm starting to think shelter uh, and keeping myself warm in cold conditions. Previous video, I was out walking around, it got down to about minus three. Didn't rain, thankfully, so that's a poncho liner. Um, you just easily chuck that on. This is actually a military spec uh, version made by Halicon Tex, uh, in that it, it, it is exactly the same as the, the military issue ones. Quite a good piece of kit there. Uh, you can also use that as a tarp, so you could put that up over your sleeping bag and keep the rain off you if you need be. So that's a full shelter system there. And then along with that, you would have seen in the previous video, uh, me actually wearing this, the Swagman Roll, great little poncho liner, wear it as a poncho, use it as a sleeping bag, use it as a ground mat, fantastic piece of equipment. So they're, they're good for shelter. Other shelter items I have, this is an SOL or a Survive Outdoors Longer Survival Bivy. So tiny, tiny little bivy. A bivy bag is just a waterproof sack basically, kind of like a body bag that you can throw your sleeping equipment into and stay safe and dry. This one, is actually like a space blanket as well. It uses that sort of material. So you can see that in there. You've got that orange, very high vis sort of plastic there. And then on the other side of that is a silver material to reflect the heat back into you. Oversized bag as well. You, you, you talk to any, <laughs> any camping and survival person, one thing that really irks a lot of people are bags that only just fit the thing that, you, that you're using in it because it's so hard to get things back into. So this, I could literally just stuff this back in this bag and it would fit. Love that. So SOL, emergency bivy. I've also chucked in there because it's winter at the moment where I'm living. This is a silk liner. So it's just another form of a sleeping bag. So this in combined with this, in combined with this, in combined with this, which actually is meant to fit over the, it's designed to fit with the poncho liner. So I could use all this to create like a swag roll that would be relatively warm. It'd be pretty warm. Um, it wouldn't be super comfortable, but it'd be warm enough for me to survive. That's just a one person fly screen. So I can create a little fly tent if I wanna keep bugs and things off me as well. Uh, Shamar, so this is just a cotton scarf that is very, popularized by, by um, all us SF dudes who are going over to Afghanistan once upon, in our once upon a time in our lives. And we all used to wear these. So I, I wore it a lot when I was over in Afghanistan. This can keep you warm when it's cold. You can wet it down, wrap it around your neck and it'll keep you cool. You can use it as a bandana, as a shawl, uh, as a shade cloth. 
You can use it in a pinch as emergency dressing for wounds. You could use it as a tourniquet. I can use it to filter water through this to take bigger particles out when I'm filling up water bottles. So 101 uses for a Shamar, very handy piece of kit. Uh, water bottle, so and a water purifier. So this one here is the Grail GeoPress. I've also got the Grail Ultra Press in another bag, uh, which is a smaller version of this. But this, I'm thinking about more of a you know three days campsite. I want to get as much water as I can. So now I'm starting to think that I can carry at least two liters of water at any one go, and I can purify that water very very quickly with the Grail system. Love these things, the Grail. Can't recommend them enough. Um, I still do use other versions as well, like Life Straw. They're great too, but the Grail I love because this thing seals up nice and tight, and then it can hold water. I can put it in there, and I'm pretty, pretty confident it's not going to spill everywhere through my bag. So, really rate the Grail. Okay, cooking. Uh, some cooking stuff that I, I, I want to think about. Now, I can start a fire and I can do things like that, but again, three days on foot. I want to be moving pretty fast. I, I don't want to be sticking around and having to do extra things like start fires. So this doesn't weigh too much. Um, I can just chuck that in there and that way, bam, I've got instant fire. So this is just butane fuel, butane, butane gas. And I have in here a full little mess cup setup. So this again is um, part of the Pathfinder titanium series. This cup here actually nests with this bottle. So it's a pretty handy little system, but I've obviously filled it with other stuff. So I can use this to cook over open flame. I've got a Soto This is just a Soto um, butane cooker, so I attach that to that. It's got its own little presser switch on it, so I don't have to you know, worry about finding some other flame or starting flame, but if I did need to do that, I have a ferro rod. Uh, but I can do that, start fire with that, put this on top, cook water, cook meals, whatever I need to do. Another way that I can treat water as well. Uh, other things I've got in here, Bic lighter, Another Bic lighter as a backup, and this one's got a bit of tape around it that you can use as kindling or to repair stuff. My fang spoon, so my spork, fork, knife, spoon. Pretty handy piece of equipment. Uh, this is a little beeswax candle. So that's about 12 hour burn candle. Um, if I was stopping somewhere overnight, rather than using the head torch and using batteries, I can just light that candle and let that burn for a little while. And that kind of saves me energy, saves me recharging things and gives me ambient light that I don't really have to worry about. And then I cannot rate these highly enough. These are so awesome. Again, coming out of Pathfinder, uh, this is the Mini Inferno. Um, I apologize if there's outside noise at the moment. It is extremely windy where I am right now. Uh, the Mini Inferno discs. So these little discs are wax, wax discs. So it's a little cotton pad that is imbued with some sort of uh, accelerant or flammable material and then covered in wax. And so you just break them like that. You can see how it starts to fray. Uh, and then I just, that will catch a spark easily off a ferro rod and boom, you've got fire. And they burn for a little while by themselves as well. So you can set that on fire, get kindling around, st stoke it up, have heaps of fire on that. This here, um, I've, sh I've shown this in a previous video where I did a review on this bottle here. This is just for grabbing into the bottle. So if I chuck that bottle there on the fire, I can reach into it and use that as a handle. So I'm not picking up hot things. So that's my little uh, mess kit, my eating kit. I've also got in here a couple of steaks and things like that. Again, if I'm gonna be setting up a poncho, a little camp setup, these aluminium, uh, aluminium pegs, they don't weigh much at all. They weigh like practically nothing. They take up zero space. I don't know why you wouldn't have them in. Just, it just makes life a lot easier. Um, then in my back section here, that laptop section, I've just got a little bit of navigation uh, back up. So map, map case to keep the map uh, all waterproof and a compass. And this is a Southern Hemisphere compass to 
make sure that I can keep on the right track now wherever I'm going. Now in an emergency too, depending on what the situation is, I might also consider uh, communi extra communication. So UHF radio may also sit in here or it's in my car and I can easily throw that in. Uh, I can also bulk this up or pair this down as well. Like I said, this is my winter kit. So this is about as large as it's going to get. In summer, I, I start to take things out. So I'm probably not gonna, maybe I wouldn't have the poncho and the silk liner. In summer, I'd really think about that or think twice about that and maybe just think about what I'm wearing as far as shelter goes. So that's basically it. This is my kit. This bag again is the Vertex Gamut 2.0. Uh, it's, it's a new bag to me. It's hard to get in Australia for some reason, these Vertex bags, but I, I, I recommend it. Like if you wanna get yourself a really good bag, I think it's somewhere in between 18 to 24 litre bag. Uh, have a think about this one. It will set you back. It will cost you a bit, but it is an extremely functional bag, especially for the purpose of being a grab bag or even an everyday carry bag. Um, and I, I would even consider pairing this back down to be my everyday carry bag and to kit it out more with my electronics and computer stuff and things like that. Anyway, that is my grab bag. Uh, that's the things that I need or the things that I consider that I need for a journey for such a uh, circumstance as I'm having to walk back from the major city that I work in. Um, not for everyone, I understand that, and I'm sure that you'll have different ideas. The last time, last couple of times I've put, put up videos about grab bags, uh, people come out of the woodwork and tell me you should do this and you shouldn't do that, um, and that's cool, I love that. None of those people, I will say though, ever actually put up videos of their own, and I would love to see other people's videos. So if you've got a comment, please let me know. Um, I'm, I'm not afraid of you like picking this apart, I wanna learn, I wanna do better in the future as well. So if you think this is stupid, let me know. If you think this is awesome, let me know also. Um, if there's things that you put in that I haven't got here, I'd also like to know that stuff. There, I, I will put this caveat on it though. This goes in my, my car and there are other things in my car as well that I round out this system with. So. Have a consider about that. Uh, think about what your purposes are. And I really hi highly recommend that people do go out and build grab bags. I can't recommend enough that people have a grab bag because emergencies happen every day to all sorts of people. It doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter what you do. An emergency could happen where you instantly have to dislocate from where you are. And whatever you have on your back is what you're going to survive with. So think about that in the future. Go out, grab your, get, get your own grab bag. Um, if you've got any questions, put them up in the comments. Would love to try and answer them or have a discussion about them. But apart from that, thanks for watching and Semper Paratus.